So you've dealt with probability density functions. There is a particular one that's very important called the normal distribution. Now you've experienced the normal distribution before uh, on school photo day. All right, so on school photo day, you stand up all of the kids and you put the shortest students over here and the tallest students over here. And it ends up looking a little bit like uh, this. That's some pretty good drawing. You can see we've got a couple of shorter people down the end. Uh, we've got some very tall people here, some basketballs. And then you can see in the middle-ish here, everyone's about the same height. Um, if we were to draw this with like um, a histogram, it would look a little more like this. So you'd have one or two short people, and as we move up, the most commonly occurring height is somewhere in the middle, and then you have just a couple of really tall people. Now, you can see we get this nice little uh, curve here. Now, imagine you went around uh, and you took, got everyone in Australia, uh, 23 million people, to line up from shortest to tallest. Now, if we were to create a histogram like this, it would have the same sort of shape. But now, instead of having uh, bin widths of 5, like I have, uh, let's make them very, very thin rectangles. Boop, 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 boop. We could approximate it as a nice, smooth curve. All right. A bit scared here. Let's try to make this this nice smooth curve. Okay, that's pretty good. Now that nice smooth curve is a normal distribution. Now theoretically, it's asymptotic, so it heads off there into infinity and heads off there into infinity, and we get this nice little thing here. Uh, now the mean will be this point here, which on my diagram is 175. Uh, okay, so normal distributions, they happen everywhere. So people's heights, people's weights, uh, people's IQs are normally distributed, around uh, 100 is the mean. Um, blades of grass, go out, pick 100 blades of grass, you'll find there's some very short ones, there's some very long ones, but um, you'll get like a, a middle valley. Naturally occurring continuous variables tend to follow a normal distribution. So important for you to understand is that it is a PDF. It's a probability density function, which means that a couple of things. The area under here is going to be equal to one, okay? Uh, because someone has to have a height, right? They don't exist without a height. Uh, so the total area under here is one. Now, if you want to know a probability of someone being a particular height, it's relatively straightforward. If you want to know what's the probability of someone being uh, less than 165 centimeters tall, well, that's going to be really easy. You just need to find that area, and you'll know the probability of them being less than 165 centimeters tall. Uh, if you want to know the probability of them being, uh, say, between 170 and 190, then we could put in a line there at 170, put a line here at 190 there, and we could find that area there, and that would give us the probability of them being between 170 and 190 centimeters. Now, I'm not going to do that right now because it's a little bit complicated. Um, so, that is our normal distribution. It happens in naturally occurring things. The area under that curve is 1, and if we can find the area in, like the integral between certain amounts, we can find the probability that someone is a certain height or weight, or they have a certain IQ, or the blade of grass has a certain height. Not finished just yet. Now, because it is a function, it has an equation, which I'll show you in a minute, but before I show you that equation, this is what's called the standard normal distribution. Okay, and it's from this standard normal distribution that we can transform and create other normal distributions. Now, the standard normal distribution has a couple of nice things going about it. First of all, its middle, the mean of it, or the median of it, is zero. So the mean is equal to this symbol here, which is equal to zero. Uh, and also, the nice thing about a standard normal distribution is that the, the uh, standard deviation is equal to 1. Okay, so um, the standard deviation is just the measure of spread. This, you can see it goes on forever and ever and ever, 
but I could draw it very, very flat, in which case the standard deviation would be greater than 1, or I could draw it very, very, like, like that, more squashed in, and the standard deviation would be less than 1, 0 0.5 or something like that. But the standard normal distribution has a mean of 0, the middle of 0, and it's spread out, its standard deviation is equal to 1. So here's what the equation of it is. Now, don't panic. You don't have to memorize that. You'll never really use that equation. Your maths teachers don't know what that equation is. Um, but this is the equation of a standard normal distribution. If you wanted to create a, say, distribution that looked more like that, not a standard normal distribution, not with a mean of 0, but a mean of 175, then you would need to transform that in some way to move that function to the right. And if you wanted to spread it out, which this one is much more spread out than this one, a greater standard deviation, then you would also need to dilate your function as well. But we're not working with that function. I just want you to understand that this is a function. It's not just some curve on a piece of paper. It is a function. It does have an equation, and so does this. But we're not going to really deal with that much because our calculator has a built-in normal distribution function that we can use. Now, I just wanted to move this these mean and standard deviations out of my way because I just want to write something here. Now, a really nice part about the normal distribution, the standard normal or any other normal distribution, is that um, if you move one standard deviation away from the mean in either direction, the area under that curve there between negative 1 and 1 68% of values fall between negative 1 and 1. It's just a number you need to remember, 68%. Between negative 2 and 2, so two standard deviations, 95% of values fall between negative 2 and 2. And finally, between negative 3 and 3 standard deviations, you'll get 99.7% of the population falling between negative 3 and 3. Now, what does that mean? Well, if I go back to my height example for a moment, if we say that our mean is, uh, it looks like 100, oh, here's our mean. If this is our mean at 175, and we say that our standard deviation is, say, um, 8 centimetres, 99.7% of the population will fall between 174 plus 24, plus 3 times 8, and um, 175 minus 24. Okay. Um, now, those are just three numbers to remember, 68, 95, 99.7. Those numbers we do kind of remember as being one standard deviation, two standard deviations, and three standard deviations away from the mean. Okay, uh, that's our introduction to the normal distribution. We've looked at something called the standard normal distribution, but understand that it can be used with a mean of anything and a standard deviation of anything, just through simple transformations. Um, we're going to get stuck into some proper worked examples coming up.